So we've mentioned the fact that aragonitic cements are often needle shaped. And there's a model that explains this, which is known as the magnesium poisoning of calcite. So imagine that in the situation A here, you have a calcite mineral or an aragonitic mineral that forms. So the mineral is like a salt. So you have a layer of carbonate, that's the green layer. And then you have a layer of metal, cal um, metal ions and that's the little uh, round gray sphere for calcium and the red triangle for magnesium. As long as you substitute magnesium for calcium into the structure at the middle of a, a, a mineral plate, it's not a problem. You, you have the green carbonate ions, then you have the calcium slash magnesium um, uh, ion layer. And because the magnesium is smaller than the calcium ion, there's a tendency of the carbonate layer to collapse a little bit around the magnesium. But in the center, it makes no difference. You just, you just can accommodate for this. But if you substitute a magnesium at the edge of the mineral, what happened is because of that effect of a smaller ionic radius, the idea is that the carbonate layer starts to basically come closer, close up, and then it becomes very difficult to grow that mineral laterally, to add layers of, uh, of uh, calcium and carbonate laterally to this structure. So that means you limit its lateral growth and all of the growth of the mineral, if you have lots of magnesium in the seawater that you substitute with, with, uh, within the aragonite, all of, that, um, all of that growth is along the C axis. And strontium and magnesium typically will substitute within the aragonite layer. So this is a relatively old model to explain the formation of needle shape for aragonite. And the idea is the following, is that in seawater where you have more magnesium, you have a very slow sideward growth and a much faster growth along the C axis. So you obtain a mineral that is elongated. So that would be your high mag calcite and your aragonite. Whereas when you, when you are in mixed water or fresh water, the magnesium calcium concentration is much lower. So then it's easier to grow laterally your mineral or um, equally laterally and vertically. So you end up with either equant minerals, so same in both direction, or with minerals that are actually growing as platy mineral, relatively large uh, in the other axes than the C axis. So that's this old model actually now, you know, is, is put into question. We know that the ionic strength of the solution plays also a very, very big role, but nevertheless, it still is an easy model to kind of comprehend and understand uh, and understand why we get these different shapes in different minerals. It's not always a good idea to rely on the shape of the crystal or the shape of the mineral to deduct something about the environment of diagenesis, but it is something that you at, at least can have. It is one piece of the puzzle, one, one element that you can use. In terms of um, isotopic signature for marine cement, well, no surprise because we said that the PDB scale that we use for carbonate is based on the belemnite, which is a marine species. Um, all of the isotopic values for the marine cements come close to zero. It's not exactly zero because it depends when it was deposited, at what temperature, which will impact the delta 18, but also the delta 13. But you can see here we have modern oids, modern marine cement, Bahamian chalk, bulk Jamaica reef rock, and um, some radiaxial calcite cement from a, an atoll in the Pacific called Enewatak Atoll. All of these plot more or less close to zero per mil in oxygen. There's some more positive values in the Bahamas and in Jamaica. These can be explained by either evaporation or, so higher evaporation, or you know, body of water that are slightly different or biog biogenic processes, but they're very close from zero. And the carbon is slightly higher. And again, that reflects just the value of the DIC, the dissolving organic carbon pool in the modern ocean compared to the Mesozoic. But you don't have major deviations here. So that's, that's the, the take home message. You can expect things close to the center, close to zero with some variation of a few per mil and that's it. And we'll see that other environment of diagenesis 
sometimes are characterized by much more extreme values in carbon and oxygen isotopes. So let's review now the different environment in shallow water deposits where we can expect cementation. And you will remember from the previous class that we need a pump to move fluid in a diagenetic system to explain why we can cement a complete pore space. And this is because if you think rationally about it, if you have one pore volume of water and you were to precipitate all the calcium carbonate content of this pore volume of water, this would not be enough, of course, to fill the entire pore because you still have all the water in it. So that's why you need really the pump and a lot of circulation of water to be able to fully cement a rock and lose all of the porosity and all of the permeability. So what are the potential pumps and environment where we can see cementation or significant cementation? Well, if we look at the slope of the reef or the basin, we've talked previously about contouride deposits, which are deposits that are being uh, transported by current, by ocean currents. These currents, because it's a flow of water on top of the sediments, these currents could actually act as a pump that circulates water in the underlying sediments. And that is one way that you can have extensive cementation around carbonate systems or carbonate platform. It's called um, essentially cementation that happens on little themes uh, in relatively deeper water in the shallow basin.